Hello, my name is Anne and welcome to a Tobinet podcast, episode 139. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. Grab a cup of tea, coffee, beverage of your choice and get comfortable because we're going to be talking about the knitting. Yes, Mondays is all about the knitting. Fridays is about the cross stitch and the quilting. So there, that's what Toby Knits is. It started out just as a knitting channel. Um, oh my gosh, I don't even know how long I've been doing this now, maybe four or five years, maybe. And um, then during the pandemic, I got very interested in quilting, never done it before. And I re-found my love of cross stitch, which I'd done many, many years ago and then took like a 25 year break. Mm. So uh, now that I'm retired, of course, I have plenty of time for all that crafty business in between looking after my grandson and granddaughter. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I love to share and I love to chit chat about my knitting and my uh, foray into yarn dyeing now. Yes, and some very exciting news about something else I'm doing now. Oh, and I know, I don't know where I get the time. I have the time myself. So I'm sure you're all saying the same thing. How do you do it? Mm, not enough hours in the day, is there really? Anyway, um, to all my lovely regulars, welcome back. And all my new subscribers, oh. Thank you for joining our little crew. We also have a um, Facebook group called Toby Nets and Friends. So pop over there, join that, and then you can share with me what you're working on. And uh, we talk about all the different stuff that we're doing, typically a sock of the month. And um, so that's a lot of fun. So go join that if you're new. And um, yeah, so, I wasn't on last Friday, Monday, or Friday, to be honest with you, because I was in Nova Scotia. I went to see Sean, who is my youngest son. Having said that, he's like 31 years old. Um, and, well, I think he is. <laughs> and uh, he is lives there with his lovely wife, Megan, the Miss Megan, and their little boy, Leo, who is adorable. That's all I'm gonna say, he's adorable. And um, we had so much fun uh, with him. He's about 18, 19 months old now. And of course he says, Nana, and he says, Papa. So, oh, you know, um, and mommy and daddy, of course. But uh, yeah, he's just a little bundle of fun. We had lots of fun there with them. We went swimming and, oh, he is not afraid of the water. Up and down that slide, he went sploosh under the water. He went not a care in the world about it. As Soon as he was out, he was back up and off he went, toddling back over to the, to the slide step. It's only a little slide, mind you, it was about three steps. And, uh, oh, if there's anybody in the way, well, he'd be like pushing them. Come on, come on, <laughs> little devil. And we went to Peggy's Cove. And that was fun. Of course, it was really odd. The first five days, six days that we were there, it was foggy, foggier than all get out. First of all, I thought it had something to do with the wildfires, but then, because they were in, I think they were in New Brunswick, the wildfires, if I'm not much mistaken, um, at that end of the country. But it, it wasn't, it literally was fog because it was warming up but the sea is cold because they're on the ocean and it's cold. So as it the cold air comes in and, he, and meets the hot air from the land, it causes fog. And uh, yeah, it was uh, quite dense. It reminded me of home, actually. Uh, England, home, I mean. And uh, yeah, it was, um, it was super interesting, um, to say the least, because it was so warm outside, but yet foggy, you know. I mean, I'm still, I've been here 40 years and I still see it raining outside in the summertime and think it's going to be cold. And open the door with a jacket on to walk Toby and realize, oh, it's, no, it's 30 degrees with the humidex. It's just still pouring with rain. So then I'm peeling layers off. <laughs> I just don't understand that yet. I haven't got it yet. And it was like that with the fog. 
So it was very, very bizarre anyway. And then it finally cleared up the last couple of days we were there. So that's when we went to Peggy's Cove. And they've built this new walkway thing there now. So you don't have to go traipsing over the rocks if you don't want to. Um, and uh, that was very nice. It was very beautifully made. So that was fun. And um, But again, it was lovely and sunny. And then as we're getting ready to leave, the fog comes in right away. I'll put some pictures at the end of some pictures of our trips. And one in particular of the fog coming back in over um, the lighthouse at Peggy's Cove. It was very bizarre. Very bizarre. Um, but we had a wonderful time. It was really nice. But you know what? It's lovely to come home. I missed my sewing machine. Mm, yeah, I did. Because, of course, I took my knitting with me. And I did a lot of knitting while I was gone. But I did no quilting. And I didn't do hardly any cross-stitch. So it's nice to come home to get back to a routine. And, yeah. So anyway. So what have I been knitting? Actually, a lot. I finished... So I don't drive, period. And uh, it's a long drive out to Nova Scotia. It's 14 hours. So typically what we do is we drive as far as Edmonston. Edmonston, Edmonston, yeah. We drive, which is in New Brunswick. It's just on the other side of the Quebec border. So we drive as far as that usually in one day, which is about eight hours. And then we stop and stay the night and then the next morning it's six hours from there to Nova Scotia so we do it in a two-day leg so of course while I'm sitting in the car for all that length of time uh it's boring uh so I knit that's all I do I knit or cross stitch but mostly I knit this time so I finished off these which are the shadow box socks and these are from if you don't know if you're new to this uh, Helen Stewart has put out this, she's from Curious Handmade, has put out this uh, sock, mystery sock booklet thing, and it's called, mm, Handmade Sock Society. I always want to call it the Secret Sock Society. But it's the Handmade Sock Society, and it started at the middle of May, and each month, May, June, July, August, September, and October, she releases a new pair of socks for us to knit. And it's a mystery. We don't know what it is until the pattern is released. But you buy a head, you buy all the six patterns in one go, and you just wait for them to show up. And because I like, I've been knitting a sock a month um, myself, actually, it's getting to be more than a sock a month at the moment. But anyway, more of that later. Um, I thought this was a fun way of just for the next six months, I knew what I was going to be knitting, basically. And she did actually, for our group, give us a discount for the whole month of June, which I thought was fabulous of her. Um, anyway, so if you got that, girls, great, because there's some really nice stuff coming. So anyway, this was the May sock and it's called the Shadow Box and it goes on both sides. You will see I actually have worn these. And they've got dog hairs all over them uh, because my son has two dogs. So these are the socks and I really like this. This yarn was called Mer Mermaid something and this was in my stash. Um, I didn't have time to dye anything up for this and I just decided to use stash yarn. So um, and this dyer doesn't dye anymore but it's a very cool pattern so that was the socks I finished on the way there so I had also at the time started the shadow no the feather vein so this was the June sock and I decided to use my June hand dyed yarn which is rose and so this is this one so I got this one finished it's a very interesting pattern. I actually did it wrong a bunch of times because um, at the beginning, and then once I got through the beginning part, I was okay. Um, but I kept forgetting all these double decreases on the one side. <laughs> but anyway, let me take it out and show you because it's very pretty. So that is what it will look like at the front. 
when it's up your leg. And the back all the way is completely empty. It's only the pattern is only on the front. Isn't that pretty? More importantly, isn't the sock yarn pretty? <laughs> oh, I love this color. It's so nice. And it's uh, roses because what I wanted it to show was pink roses, red roses, orange roses, and then little flecks of green for the leaves. So this is that. So I have started the second sock. Get all my bits out the way. So obviously that's just the rib. And uh, I've just started the first two rows of the, not that you can see that, of the pattern. And again, this is my yarn roses, or rose, I should say. It should probably be roses for all my different colors in there. And so that was that sock. So I am working away on them. I'll probably spend two nights a week working on that. I usually like to plan when I what I do each evening, because I mostly knit and crochet in, or cross stitch, well, and crochet, in the evenings when I'm sitting down watching the telly with my hubby or if he's at work for the evening by myself. And during the daytime, if I'm not out and about doing stuff is when I usually quilt. So that one will get done um, in the evening. And so I've picked for that one Mondays and Fridays, I think I'm going to knit on that one. I'm not sure. Something like that. Um, the other sock that I have started is the July sock for, again, the Handmade Secret Society. And I am using my July yarn color, which is Larkspur. Now, I've been dyeing each month the birth flower of the month. And Larkspur is the birth flower and it looks so different. Let me put a picture here of what it looks like skeined up. And it looks, you cannot, you can't see the way it's gone. I'm sure as I get into it, it'll get a darker blue. The second sock will probably be more darker blue than the first sock. But anyway, and so this is what we've got going on for the seed pod. Isn't that cool? And this is very interesting because we started with 2.25. Then for here, we're at 250 just for the seed pod part. Then we're going to go back to 2.25. And I think it's plain sailing the rest of the way. So it'll go quite quickly. But that is coming out really sweet. A really sweet little pattern. And it is on both sides. Now, it was a bit on the t t uh, difficult side at one point because... When I first was knitting them, I didn't have any cable needles with me because it does use a cable needle. But it was only one stitch we were twisting. So I thought there is a way I know where you can do that without using a cable needle. So of course I YouTubed all that, found one I thought would work and started it that way. But <laughs> one of the rows calls for like this three stitch thing where you're flipping two at the same time and anyway, it's very magical, <laughs> but I definitely need cable needles. So I had to stop this one in the car. And I was like, okay, I'm not doing this one because I started this one on the way home from Nova Scotia. And oh, let me tell you, on the way home, my goodness. So we're driving. We stopped first in Frederick. We left nine o'clock Saturday morning. We stopped in Fredericton to see Bob's brother and we had lunch with him. Because we were a little bit longer than I had anticipated we would be there with him. Because we were enjoying our visit. So by the time we got back on the road, it was 4 o'clock. 4, 4.30 actually. And it was like 2, 3 hours to Edmiston from Fredericton. So it was like, mm, we'll stop there and we'll see if we can get a hotel for the night. Well, we stopped there. And the first hotel we tried, they were fully booked. So I know there's two more hotels on the other side of, of Edmiston. So we drive it's not that it's not that far so we drove to the it's like one or two exits so we drove a bit further and we came to another hotel that we'd stayed at going and we went in to see how much it was to stay 325 dollars for the night by which time it's seven o'clock at night and i'm like i'm not paying three and three and 
hundred dollars just to put my head on a pillow? Are you kidding? No. So, uh, no, we didn't stay. So we get back in the car and we just think, okay, well, we'll drive and it's still light out. We're both not tired. We're okay. We've had some, a big, big lunch, so we're still fine. We stopped and got a coffee and tea, as you do, as you do. And of course, a donut. And um, so we, we drive in and we're thinking, well, there might be a hotel off the, the, the highway or something. I nearly said the motorway then. <laughs> And uh, well, you know, we'll find um, we'll find something. Of course, we keep driving, and we're listening to a podcast. We're listening to Dateline, <laughs> and we're like completely engrossed in this Dateline. I'm knitting, listening away. Bob's driving, we're eating chips, potato chips, and um, we uh, we're having a great time. And before we know it, we're almost in Quebec, <laughs> and we've completely forgot to look for a hotel. <laughs> So we ended up pulling into like a rest stop. They have all these gorgeous rest stops in Quebec along the side of the highway. And they've got like bathrooms and all kinds of stuff. It's really nice. Very well done. So we ended up stopping there and, and Bob said, I think I'll just close my eyes for a little bit. I said, okay, me too. So we had like an hour nap or whatever. Of course, when you wake up, it's now dark. And I think it was maybe 10 o'clock then. 10 or, no, it was later than 10. No, it was probably about 10 or 11 o'clock. And uh, yeah, because we stopped at 10, so it was about 11. And so uh, we drove home from there because it's like four and a half, five hours from Quebec City to where we live in Ontario. So we just drove home. So we got home at five o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. And um, to say I was tired yesterday is an understatement because I really was. <laughs> and we had to do groceries. And of course, I wanted to go see Tristan because I hadn't seen him for two weeks and Evelyn. So uh yeah, we didn't do an awful lot really yesterday. But anyway, so then I was able last night with my other cable, I needed two cable needles at this point now for that special stitch to get on and get this done. So I'm almost finished the little seed pod part and then plain sailing. So then the other thing I did was, while I was there, I always love to find a yarn shop when I'm on vacation or in a new city or a place that we've gone for a day trip or something like that. I always like to find a yarn shop. And when I go in, I always like to find something different, hand dyed from a local dyer. And I found a really pretty um, sock. We went to his picture. I was at Loops in Halifax. And I um, got this yarn, which I thought was lovely. I love the beige color in it and then the pastel -y other colors. I think that's very sweet. I don't have a dye to make any beige. I know there is one, but I haven't got it yet. And this is the yarn where it came from. I hope that's the right way for you. It's called fleece artist organic cottage socks and the color is oh i think i read oh echo beach and this actually comes in a skein of 115 grams and it's so soft and when i looked at it let me see if i can find and peeled it apart here it's actually four twists so it's a full ply, I think that's what you would call it, but it is gorgeous and super soft. So I decided to make just a plain short pair of socks and I'm actually writing a pattern up for these because these are going to be called the holiday socks because, you know, when I go on holiday, I want a mem memory of that holiday. So when these are finished, and I didn't want a long, complicated sock that was going to take me forever. I wanted something quick and short and sweet that I could just knit up um, in the car, in the hotel room, wherever we were, at Sean and Megan's. And it was short and sweet. So this is going to be the holiday socks and these are getting currently it's got a rounded toe, a partridge heel and heel turn and flap and just a two by two rib and it is just plain. But I'm writing this sock pattern up and it will be free. 
on my Etsy shop and Ravelry page. So I um, I have the second one to start. I haven't done it. I've written the pattern up. I printed it this afternoon and I will go through it one more time to make sure everything is correct from the pattern before I release it. And um, I have somebody that will test knit it for me as well and possibly a second person. And I'm thinking of a third I'm going to ask if they will test knit for me and then it will be released as a pattern. And it's called the holiday socks. So yes, that will be that. I also, uh, while I was away, I went into a Valley Village with my daughter-in-law, Megan, and I found a book and it's all about stitch patterns. There's loads, it's like a, some sort of encyclopedia of stitch patterns, I'm not sure, but there's tons of them. And I was flipping through it and I thought, hmm, I've just written that pattern up. And I actually, you might remember, do you remember the daisy socks? I'll put a picture here. That was the same pattern. I just wanted something quick to test out that um, yarn and what it would look like when it was um, knit up. So that was the same pattern. So I already had the pattern half written. I just finished it off and put it all fancy with pictures and stuff. And uh, yeah, so that um, is is coming soon. Okay, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, so I found the stitch pattern book. So while I was flipping through it, I thought, well, I've already written up a pattern. I know kind of what I'm doing and I've decided I'm going to do a Halloween sock. Let me know below if you're interested in this. So here's the plan. I have charted out the pattern. So it will come with a chart or a straight knitting, whichever you want to do. Um, it's not that difficult, don't worry. Um, it will be three colors. So it will come with a 100 gram skein of yarn in one color and two minis in two different colors. Um, and um, it's Halloween based. I have a photograph that um, later, closer to the time, when I'm ready, I will release so you can see the colors. And um, what I'm gonna do, it's a mystery. So I'm gonna put up on my Etsy page, um, you can sign up and pay for the yarn and you'll get the pattern free. So yeah, that's how I was gonna do it. And um, so, August the 1st is when the listing will go up on Etsy so that you can purchase the yarn. The yarn will be shipped out September the 12th. So that gives me time to order yarn in and depending on how many people want to do this and uh, dye it. And then October 1st, we will start and it will be a knit along. Ooh! And um, uh, yeah, it will be... Um, so hopefully we can have it all done for Halloween. Ah, or at least we'll try. That's a month. It gives everyone a month to knit the spare socks. Not that hard. Um, so anyway, that's the plan. So let me know below if you would be interested in something like that, joining in. So I think it'll be kind of fun. I'm doing it anyway, but it just gives me a good idea. Um, so yes, uh, I'm very excited about it. And as I say, I do have already got a lady that will test knit that for me. And I'm going to ask another lady to test knit that for me. And then um, we will be all ready. So that's going to be exciting, I think. And uh, the shop is now open. I have opened up the Etsy shop today with a difference. Hmm. So here is the difference. Other than this Halloween one that's going to come up. Um, I talked to my financial advisor, uh, who is Sean. <laughs> And um, we had a good talk about what I was doing with my little yarn dyeing business. And he told me not to do any more dye to order. Um, and he said, because you're spending more time dyeing the odd individual yarn of um, wool than you are if you had dyed up a batch. 
So going forward, I have adjusted everything on the, other than the carnation, that one I've still left as a die to order, but all the other yarn has been removed. No, it hasn't been removed. Whatever I have left in stock of that yarn, it could be two skeins, it could be one, um, that's all there's going to be and there won't be any more dyed after that. So if you wanted the Lily of the Valley and there's only one left, you better order it <laughs> and then it's gone. And when I do the August yarn, which I will be dyeing up this week ready for the shop um, or next week, I'm not sure yet. The August yarn, um, I will be doing it in a batch of four or six, depending. And that's all that will be in the shop. So once it's gone, it's gone. So that's the way the shop will work. I will pre-dye a bunch of stuff and put it in. For the Halloween sock along, I will take orders for that because I don't want to dye up four and then eight of you all want to do it. So that will be a little different. That will be a dye to order, but the order will go in first. If you see what I mean. Yes. Um, anyway, that's all I have for you today. Yes. You can see I changed my room around a little bit, so it's a bit more comfy. I've got my sewing stuff and my yarning stuff on that side. The lighting's a little bit better too, I think. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for you today. Um, I will be back next Monday and uh, Friday. I'll be here Friday with some quilty fun and some cross stitch. Okay, I'll talk to y'all soon. Oh, and if in case you're wondering where Topi is, we haven't picked him up yet. <laughs> um, Bob had to work today, so uh, we will pick him up tomorrow. I can't wait to see him. I haven't seen him for two weeks. Oh, but I have been getting uh, pictures of him, so I know he's doing okay. <laughs> So, yeah, so hopefully next Monday you'll see my little tobes. Okay, so enjoy a couple of the pictures on the end here, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!